imagination Hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Pam. How are you? Good morning, Jeff. I am fine and looking forward to this. Good. We're on session number three for you folks that are following along. Um, we hope you all had an opportunity to participate in the prior two sessions. We talked about pollinators on session one. Uh, we talked about uh, veggie and fruit uh, container gardening on episode two. That was last week. Um, and with that said, we're going to be talking today about uh, deforestation. So as I've shown in the past, we certainly have um, resources available. My hope is that um, we will probably take this web page and add some of the resources that we've developed after, the, after all the sessions are over, including uh, videos of past sessions. So we really appreciate your time. Uh, my name is Jeff Good, and I'm the uh, Chief Education Technology Officer for PBS Western Reserve. And I'm uh, privileged to always be able to work closely on these sessions and other sessions with, um, and she'll introduce herself. Hi, I'm Pam Oviatt, and I'm the Early Childhood Coordinator at PBS Western Reserve. And I love working with Jeff too. We've done lots uh, together in the last year and a half when we went more virtual on our uh, trainings and our uh, webinars to reach out to you. So with that said, um, for, for folks of, for first time, um, for first time folks, just want to talk a little bit about Cyber Chase. Um, we, we brought PBS Western Reserve located in Kent, Ohio. Um, if you're local folks, that'll be your PBS television station. Um, we're America's, uh, Cyber Chase is America's longest running math series. Um, it's been engaging students in math and STEM activities for more than 17 years. Um, tells a story of a bunch of curious kids they're sent into cyberspace to outwit and outsmart the villain hacker using their math and problem solving skills. What WNET did, um, and we collaborated with WNET, who, are, who is the creator of CyberChase, um, CyberChase did prove that math is everywhere. But what WNET wanted to do is create a series um, called CyberChase Green It Up. And it consists of four virtual training modules, including a big finale that we'll be doing tomorrow. It's designed to help students explore the environment, think about building critical thinking skills. And then the ultimate goal with the big finale that we'll talk about here in a bit um, is to take action. So the idea that we've had, that Pam and I have worked on for the last two sessions and this third session is, it's really building an awareness of environmental issues with the hope that all of you, uh, all of your locations will spend some time and really think about how you can act and be active in your community on those environmental issues. Um, so we have the big finale scheduled for tomorrow, but before we go into the big finale, each of our sessions includes a, an activity that we'll be doing during the actual uh, virtual training. So with that said, um, Pam's gonna give you a quick overview for those that, that may be your first timer. I think we've got some first time folks out there today. Um, that would want to make sure they're they're prepared for that that activity. Thank you, Pam. Oh, thank you, Jeff. Well, in your bags that you received the materials of, there's a bag that says deforest deforestation, and in that bag are all kinds of different materials. There was tissue paper, pipe cleaners, uh, cardstock, um, craft sticks, and what we're going to do today is. We're going to, the boys and girls can work either individually or in small groups, and they're going to draw a picture of a scene without any trees. So think about that. You could look outside of your program's windows or out your window or think of a place you've been, and you're going to draw that picture. Maybe, maybe you draw a hill or a school with 
without any trees. And then you get to be very creative and use the materials that we sent you and make some wild trees so that we have a 3D mural of I'm how important trees are to my us. Office. So I um, took the cardstock and rolled it and the tissue paper and made some wild trees of my own. But you use your imagination and you can also use any recyclables that you have at your programs. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you and sorry about that little bit of an interruption. Um, believe it or not, as, a, as I jokingly, as we talked about the premise of the show Cyber Chase and the hacker, it appears that one of our folks got uh, an email hacked. And so it sounded like we all had to go do something, but it was, it, was a, it was a hacked email. So that was the reason why we got the email real quick. Um, just thought I'd explain a little bit about, so thank you, Pam, talking about the, the session that we're gonna do today. Um, and then tomorrow we're wrapping everything up with a big finale event. And what we hope um, will happen in that big finale event, we're trying to make it as, as interactive, but requiring all of the, all the facilitators to kind of look at their group and lead a discussion. Because what we'd like to do is have all of your students reflect on what they've learned through, throughout the session so far. So everything from pollinators, um, to the, the growing of veggie in a fruit garden, container gardening, talking about what we're talking about today in deforestation. And then we want all of your groups to work together to talk about an issue in their community. Um, then we're gonna, hopefully the kids will sign, um, your locations will all sign a green it up pledge and they're gonna describe what they plan to do to make a difference in their community. And that's coming up tomorrow in the big finale. Um, and very quickly, these have all been fun little 30 to 45 minute explorations. We all interact with you via the chat room. Some of you have already jumped on the chat room and connected with us and we appreciate that. Um, that's how we'll be connected throughout. We'll be asking some questions throughout and we're hopeful that uh, you're all familiar with where the chat feature is on Zoom that you can, uh, you can answer some questions or even make some suggestions our way. Pam explained the explore activity and that's gonna happen during the virtual exploration. And then each activity um, has a get outside and a take home activity. And the, the get outside activity you can do during your day there at your facilities. And then the take home family activity is part of the family guide um, that you all re receive. We're offering these sessions three times a day. And if you've got any pictures as you're going through either the um, the event that we do today, the activity, the explore activity that we do today regarding trees, feel free to send your pictures to education at pbswesternreserve.org or send me an email. You've got my email address. So let's take a little, little closer look at, at deforestation. Welcome. And what we're going to talk about is what is deforestation? And if you look at the word in the middle of the word there, you see the word forest and you think of trees and, and you think about taking that word apart in D and maybe it has something to do with not as many trees. So keep that in mind. It's a, a word to remember, deforestation. And then what should we know about it? Jeff, that's a really important topic. And why should we be so concerned? And here's a shout out to all our explorers. What can we and you do to stop deforestation? Very important. And every session that we've done so far, we focus on a big idea. And obviously today's big idea is talking about deforestation. So big idea number one is that we realize that trees provide the earth with the many things that help other plants, animals, including humans survive. For instance, trees provide air, um, trees provide places to live for animals, and they also provide food to eat. That's one of the big ideas of today. And another big idea is that we use trees to make paper, just what you're using today, and supply wood for building houses and making furniture and all kinds of different things. So the wood from trees is very important for us. And last but not least, as Pam explained, is when we look at the word deforestation, forest is in the middle, and when you throw that DE in front of it, that means basically taking away those forests. That's when people destroy forests permanently to either create room for farmland, for housing, or for other buildings. And you know, Jeff, that's, those are all important things, farmland and housing and buildings. But then when we take trees away, we have to think about how can we replace them. 
And, and what can we do to supplement them? Absolutely, Pam. Sometimes um, buildings are necessary and cities are necessary, but what can we do to supplement those cities? You'll hear the term in some of our videos, you hear the term green space. And I think we had that um, in the last couple video, in the last couple sessions. So think about that. Um, we're gonna uh, play a quick video, uh, the Cyber Chase Gang, and um, it's gonna deal with deforestation. But the questions that we want you to look at is this video runs about two and a half minutes is how in the forest, how is the forest in this video useful and important? What does it provide for hacker? What does that forest do for cyberspace? And how do the kids feel about the forest? What does it do for other animals? And then finally, what do the kids and hackers do at the end of the video to help? Let's take a closer look. Hello, thinking tree. My old friend, how have you been? Ah. Uh, what was that? Boss, something's happening to the trees. They're disappearing. What? No one messes with my trees. This is why I need your help. Those poor trees and poor animals. So sad. But I thought there was nothing on the northern frontier. But Hacker. Hacker's the reason no one goes there. But it also has the most beautiful forest in cyberspace. And the oldest. All these trees are connected to one another through their root system. Like one big family. Wow. The forest covers about one-third of the entire northern frontier. Who knew? And all those trees are home to so many animals and plants. At least they were. This old forest also helps to keep the air clean all across cyberspace. There's a forest next to my farm. I've been climbing those trees forever. I don't know what I'd do if someone cut them down. What do we do? What's the plan? The plan is... We, we replant! gonna take a really long time for these trees to grow. Years and years, but we did it. Ah, Jeff, I, I learned again what deforestation means. Hello, thinking tree. So now I did too. Good. So let's reach out to folks and um, ask some questions right now. First of all, when you watch the video, um, how is the forest in the video useful and important? So take an opportunity, go into the um, chat feature and tell and just give us an idea of what you think, why the forest in the video was important. So you folks that are that are familiar. I see right now we've got um, looks like Amanda's garden has got a got good grasp. The chat, Angela, Kelly, we love seeing you here and your and your group that are here today. Um, Amanda's garden, so that's awesome. So any of you folks out there want to reach out? We also have some folks at Precious Cargo and Sebring. Um, Ariana is out there. Um, Kid Watch. They reached out to me um, in regards to the session. So what are your what are your ideas? Go in the chat room and keeps the air clean. That's right, Kelly. Thanks so much. Your group was awesome there. Added a, a great feature that does keep the air clean. Anything else that those uh, the forest in the video was useful or helpful for? 
And I know we've heard from Angela before and her Penny and her group and Olivia. And so I know we've heard from them in other sessions. So great. Keeping the air clean is very important. Well, in Jeff too, we can think about what does it provide for Hacker? What did that, what was the forest? Why was it so important to Hacker? And, and what does it do for cyber cyberspace? Yeah, what does it do for cyberspace? So when you think about folks that are out there, uh, audience that are out there watching right now, um, what did the forest provide for Hacker and what did it do for cyberspace? What were your, when you watched the video, what were some ideas? Why did, why was Hacker so interested in the forest? And then why, what did it do? What did the forest do for cyberspace? Any ideas out there, folks at Precious Cargo or Olivia? How about Angela's group? Um, Kid Watch, you folks are oh, out yeah. there. Look what uh, Olivia's group said, it provides food for animals. That sure, do, they sure do. Trees do that. The forest Certainly does did. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, how did the, so as you think about some other answers, but how did the kids feel about the forest? What were their feelings about the forest when you watched that video? What were some of their, their feelings? Um, Kelly writes, uh, trees are for nature, provides homes for animals. Absolutely. Thank you, Kelly. And Kelly's group. Mm -hmm. All those explorers out there, they have really good ideas, Jeff. What are, what, how, did the, how did the kids in, that, in the video feel about the forest? What kind of feelings did the kids have about the forest? Pam, what was your thought on the, on the kids and the, and the forest? They knew that they were important. They didn't want to lose the, the forest. And so they started thinking about what could they do? What could they do? It was really and, important to them too. And, and Kelly jumps in and says the kids were happy when they saved the forest. And I think everyone was happy too. Um, we already talked a little bit about what the forest did for other animals. And um, what do the kids and Hacker do at the end of the video to help? What were some things that the kids and Hacker did um, at the end of the video to, to help? We may have answered that already. Kelly may have answered that already, but we'll... Mm -hmm. Anybody else out there, folks from Kid Watch or Precious Cargo? We've got Amanda's Garden folks are out there. Anybody else want to talk about what did the kids and Hacker do together at the end of the video to help? Mm, I remember them doing something in specific to help. And I think that's important to remember, even though it's going to take a long time to um, see all their work to the to where they're uh, full grown, but they did something special that was something we could all do. They started wow. replanting trees. Thank you, Kid Watch. Thanks for jumping in there and and talking for a minute. The folks at Kid Watch, thank you so much for your contributions. All of you, thank you so much for your contributions. Um, this is the most uh, most interaction we've had in all of our sessions so far. So thank you so much. So now we're going to look at a video, um, and this is the let's think about it section uh, of, the, of the session so far. So I want you to start to think about this is um, a plum life, and it starts dealing with go plant a tree, which is rather fitting because that's how the last video wrapped up. But what I want to leave you with is a couple of questions, and this video runs about 254. You know, what is a so pay attention to what is a bare root tree, and why is it easier to move? Why should we plant more trees? What do trees do for the environment? And then why are trees important to the air that we breathe? Let's take a closer look. Welcome to Plum Landing. Go plant a tree. We're on a mission for Plum. We're planting trees. Do you know what type of tree this is? A red maple? It is, correct. Dave is a city arborist. An arborist is someone who is an expert in trees. Today, we are all arborists. We're going to plant two bare root trees. I have a question. Is it bare root? Correct, bare root. So, I think maybe the roots are oh. bare? <laughs> correct. So, the root system is exposed like this. And the great thing about bare root trees is that they're super light and very easy to move around and handle. It's pretty light, yep. Dig! Dig! First we dug the hole. What we're going to do is we're going to dig down. We probably only need to go maybe about 10 to 12 inches or so. Dig! Dig! All right, guys, let's take the tree out of its bag and 
Let's see if we're at the right depth. The important thing when you plant a tree is you want to make sure that you have the root flare exposed. The root flare is where the trunk and the roots meet. It's that swelling part right here. So you want your root flare either at or just above grade, which we are, looks like we're maybe about an inch or so above grade. What do you mean by grade? Grade is where the existing ground is, I guess you could say. If you go and lay your shovel out on the ground, you can kind of see this is the grade right here. Now we can go ahead and start putting some soil in. We'd saved the soil we dug up, and now we're putting it back around the roots. And what we'll do is we'll fill it up about halfway, and then we'll put some water in there. It's nice and muddy. <laughs> the mud feels squishy. <laughs> now we're planting tree number two. Plum and the kids learned about the jungle and biodiversity. Biodiversity is all the different animals and plants living in an environment. Today we are contributing to biodiversity by planting these trees in this park. I think it's important to plant a tree because it helps the environment. Trees help the environment by taking carbon dioxide out of the air and putting oxygen back in. It's harmful to have too much carbon dioxide in the air. When this tree grows and gets a little bigger, it will provide food and homes for animals that might not be able to live in this park otherwise. We're contributing to the environment by planting trees so there can be new, huge trees. So you could check with your cities and towns and people who plant trees to get involved with this kind of thing. Nice job. Nice job. Explore your world and then tell Plum about it at the Plum Landing Site at pbskids.org. So Olivia's group has already weighed in, and uh, oftentimes we try to think of words for people, and a tree person, which is great, Olivia, thank you so much, is called an arborist, and we learned that. At, and But in some respects, all of those kids, like they talked about, as they were planting those trees, they, they too were arborists at that point in time. Um, so we look out, I know that I've planted trees before, and I have planted bare root trees, and I have planted trees with what they call a root ball. And the problem with a root ball is that it's, so think about all that dirt that you saw being dug out of the ground. A root ball is all of that dirt and all of those roots all wrapped up in burlap that then you have to dig a bigger hole um, to, to get it planted in the ground. Um, and it's much, much heavier. So I love the fact that they were doing bare root trees. It makes it so much easier to plant a bare root tree, speaking from experience. Absolutely. I know I'd rather have the bare root tree too. So what, what were some of the reasons that they threw out there why we should plant more trees and what do trees do for the environment? We kind of touched on this on the last video also. Yeah, and early on, um, Kelly Lawn's group said it cleans the air. And then in this video, I heard how it cleans the air. Yeah, and a lot of that has to do with what, what we breathe in and what we breathe out. So we know that we breathe in oxygen and we breathe out carbon dioxide or CO2. Um, and so what's nice about the trees is they take in and produce the, um, the oxygen that, that we need. So the more trees we plant, they talk about green space and what it does for the environment, the more oxygen they create for all of us. Yeah, and as we see that just got uh, put in, it's for animals to leave, live. Trees are so important for animals to live, to, pro to provide shelter and food and even air for them too. That's wonderful. Thanks so much for all of the input today. Uh, you guys have all been great. So let's talk about a little bit of, a, of an activity to try. This one's called Three Cheers for Trees. And then as Pam will explain a little bit, but the basic, the basic uh, premise of it is that you're all going to create a mural that helps to communicate why trees are so important. So let's step back and think about if the uh, place has no trees, how would it look? And so that's what we're going to start with first is take a, a, some time and draw a picture either by yourself or with a group of, of uh, your friends and draw a picture of a scene with no trees in it. 
and then we're going to use that as a backdrop to create uh, to um, as a backdrop for the trees that we create with the materials that we have, all the recyclable things. And you can make all your kind of wild trees. I made this one out of pipe cleaners and this one out of tissue paper and a rolled paper, but then you're gonna make some trees and set it in front of the paper that the picture that you drew and see how much difference it makes between a scene with no trees and then we add trees. So explorers, artists, creators, Go to work. And we'll be back in five minutes.
Every time we see that timer, Jeff, I want to count it down. 10, 9, 8. <laughs> well, we know that you may not have had enough time to complete your murals and then even create all your trees. So please feel free to keep doing that as we continue this presentation. So let's take a moment, watch another, um, another video that talks about why forests matter. So when you watch this video and it runs about uh, three and a half minutes, 323, you can continue to work on your mural, murals um, you can also look at, watch this video and learn about why forests matter, how do we sustain our trees, and what is our responsibility to the forest? Let's take a closer look. Welcome to Plum Landing, a city in the forest. Today we're on a mission for one. We're going to see how lots of different animals live together in the forest. Welcome to the forest. This is a forest area. It's actually in the city. And this is where plants and animals live. This is the city that plants, animals, and insects live in. Imagine the tall trees as buildings where animals live and work. Jesse is a forest ranger for the U.S. Forest Service. My name is Henry, and I'm here with Zuzu, David, Mira, Tessa, and their dad, Elon. Plum and the kids were basically exploring a jungle. Which is a special kind of forest called a rainforest. And we're in a forest too, a New England forest. We learned about how the forest is different from the jungle and how it's similar. There are a lot of trees in a jungle and there are a lot of trees here. In a jungle, there's activity up in the tops of the trees and there's a lot happening in the tops of the trees here that we don't see right away. Did you see any signs of animals in the tree canopy? I saw some holes in the leaves that are probably made by inchworms. I saw a chipmunk. So let's take a look at this log. Even though it looks like it's dead, it's actually full of life. Come on in close. I found a few holes. Those holes were created by insects that were feeding on the wood and helping this tree to decompose. The animals, they kind of make these logs and these trees their home. They're like apartment buildings for insects. When we look down there, we see spider webs in the dark. There are some spiders. The spiders are hoping to catch some of those insects. It looks like coral and I think it's fungus. It's kind of surprising. It's very soft and very smooth too. Look what's crawling around on the colorful fungus. Oh wow, that is nice. Look at the little fruit flies. I'm going to draw a picture of this for Plum. We're collecting data because we want to show Plum the ecosystem of the forest. Is that a rock or is that something growing in the log? It kind of looks like a mushroom or something. I'm making a sketch for Plum so she can see this mushroomy thing. Hey, Jesse, I have a question for you. Do you think it was here before the tree fell or after? You know, I don't know. Because maybe the tree was standing dead long before it actually fell over. And the fungus is actually living off of the dead wood. I think it's important to learn about nature and the environment because it helps people understand nature better. Nature is basically a part of us. Explore your world and then tell Plum about it at the Plum Landing Site at pbskids.org. Well, Jeff, I used my jotter notebook to write down some more words. I heard the term tree canopy, and then I, I wrote down about insects feeding on the wood. So let's go back to those other questions. So as we talked about, we talked about what is a forest and why do they matter? I know we've we've covered most of that um, in our previous videos, but but what what is the whole idea? Why are forests so important? And then what can we do to sustain our forests? And then what is our responsibility to the forests? It seems pretty repetitive, but I think you know we're learning learning quite a bit about how important forests are 
uh, to our environment, how important they are for many things, right? So many, so they're important to us to provide that, that uh, important oxygen that we need as to survive. Um, but also we learn quite a bit about how the forest um, provide shelter for other animals. Um, so there's a, there's a wealth and this one kind of went into a, a, some more details about kind of what happens to a, a tree when it, when it falls down, when it's done. So did anybody notice anything in particular about what we can do to sustain our forest and what is our responsibility to our forest? Or really, why do, why do forests even matter? Well, Jeff, when I was watching that video, I heard them say that that forest was in the middle of a city. That it was in a, you know, by a city. So I'm wondering, should we save some land to have forests in our cities, to have parks? And, and I think, Pam, you see a lot of folks, a lot of cities that do just that. Um, if you ever see a picture of New York City, um, that beautiful big New York City, um, you realize that they've got it right in the middle of all of it is this wonderful, huge green space of trees. Um, and if, if you look at the picture, you'll, you'll appreciate the fact that um, even as a, a city as big as New York City, um, they have a very large area there um, that is a green space for them. And Jeff, in the areas that most of us live around here that are on in the webinar, we have trees, but we also have those green spaces set aside as national parks or as uh, regional parks. Um, I know several that are out around here and that are close to the people that are attending today. So let's take a look at some resources that you can use. We're going to talk a little bit about your get outside activity as well as your family activity. Um, this is a great website. Now it focuses a lot in the California area, um, but what I really like about this site is it also is applicable to around here. And if you look at uh, it's canopy.org and I will, uh, and the, the site itself, I'll throw this in the chat room. And it really talks about the public health and social benefits of trees. What, what are the benefits of trees? They talk about uh, clean air. They talk about access to the trees, green spaces and uh, parks promote greater physical activity. If you have a place to run in the park or hike in the park, that helps reduce stress while improving the quality of life in our cities and our, in our towns. There's an environmental benefit. Every, any, everything from, uh, they talk here about a tree as a natural air conditioner. They say the evaporation from a single tree can produce the cooling effect of 10 room size, especially as warm as it's been lately. We all know about air conditioners, residential air conditioners operating 20 hours a day. Um, tree wood breaks can reduce residential heating costs. So for instance, if, if folks have trees around their homes, um, during the winter time, and if it's very breezy, those will, uh, very windy, that'll, that'll help reduce your heating costs of your house. While in the summertime, having trees around your house help shade and cool your house. So there's just a lot of great benefits to trees, some, some fun facts. It's, it's a great resource for you to take a, a peek at. Um, I shared it in the, in the uh, chat room there. And uh, it also talks about uh, caring for young trees over here, caring for mature trees, um, watering guidelines, what are all the different bugs and diseases that trees have. So take an opportunity, take a look at that uh, website. It's a, it's a great resource. And while trees are really beneficial, uh, to go back to the other questions we asked is what should we do to help trees? And Amanda's, Amanda's garden said, we think we should be careful how we walk in our forests and green spaces and especially don't litter in them. Absolutely, because you kind of offset all the good things the uh, green spaces do when you, when you litter in those green spaces. Um, this is a second site that talks about, and I'll, I'll go to it here. I'm going to, I'll grab this link for you all. And this is called the, this is from the Rainforest Alliance. And what's nice about this site um, is it talks about uh, products from companies that, that kind of uh, emphasize environmental, social, and economic uh, sustainability. 
So in other words, these are companies that um, aren't, aren't taking away our forest and producing their products. So what's really nice about it is it gives you an opportunity to look at different products that are out there. And all of these folks are very environmentally conscious as they're producing their products. Um, so it, it really allows you to begin to think about what products do I have at home um, and do they come from companies that support the environment? And next, we have a family activity that you can do, and, and, um, and then you can do it as a, a program, or you can do it as your outside activity, or you can do it later, explores with your family. But that's adopt a tree, and take a look at a tree, and then and on this, uh, on the site that Jeff will put on the uh, chat room too, is that they also have a, um, adopt a tree journal that you can uh, print out um, or do like tree rubbings, which is what they're doing there and take a piece of paper and put it up against the bark and then take a crayon and just rub it over to the paper to see what, uh, to see the pattern of the bark. Jeff? The other thing I like about this site too, is that um, you observe your tree all year long. So what are some things that you'll notice about your tree during the different seasons. The beauty of being in Northeast Ohio, sometimes I, I think it's a great thing. And other times when it's really snowy, I don't say the same thing, but we really have an opportunity to see all four seasons. And so do our trees, so do our plants. So in this, um, in this, on this website, it's a great activity for you to observe your tree and all, all four of the seasons. So everything from spring, when you begin to see the, the tree beginning to bud, um, in the summertime, you're going to see everything, all of these different signs that you can find. The leaves change color in the fall. In the wintertime, there's going to be bare branches. So all of these things are important as you look at your tree journal. And then last but not least is, is looking at a, a website. Let me pull this uh, link up here for you. Um, and like I say, of course, it's a great place to look at trees, not only just in your community, um, but also in your local, your local state parks. Stateparks.org is a great website that allows you to locate a state park that's near you. You can either look up by your state or you can even find state parks um, that are very close to you. And if I take a moment just to show you very quickly, um, I can choose by state. So here I am and locate a park. Or the other option I have is if I say, I'm gonna find parks near me, and I'm right now in Kent, Ohio. So if I look at finding parks that are near me, a Google map opens up and it shows me all the different parks that are available to me, everything from that, that are near me. So everything from Guilford Lake to Lake Milton to West Branch, um, all of these different parks that are available for me to visit and see these trees. So everything, um, and you can see it listen right on the map. So I can do everything from um, these different sites, the Portage Lakes, the Wingfoot Lake State Park. We've got West Branch. So it's just another great resource for you to uh, visit your local park um, and view the trees. So Pam, you want to talk a minute about the, the get outside, the adopt a tree activity that these folks can do either a little bit of both. If they want to do it for their, their facility activities, certainly get outside and adopt a tree or they can do it for a family activity. Really, and as we were talking about watching the tree for four seasons, also think about what animals live near that tree, what could be in that tree, um, and, and even what insects could be in that tree. So think about that. And then with your program or your family's explorers, think about how, as you look around, how would the place be different if there weren't trees there? And, and what would it look like? And who would live there? And what about, we talked about air conditioning in the shade, and how would you feel? And and then there are field guides you can uh, use to identify different trees. And there are um, field guides that you can look at a tree and look at the bark, look at the leaves and identify that tree. So get outside and look at those trees and think about even how old they are. Because um, think about the tree, the thinking tree, how old that tree was in the video clip. But get out and look at trees. And I think this is a great activity for you as you, um, that, like Pam said, the five minutes to do that activity may not have been enough when you had to do the activity where you drew in what it was like without trees and then add your trees. Um, 
just take an opportunity to go around your around your facility today. And then when you go home and, and work with your, your moms and dads and your grandpa and grandmas and your sister and brothers, um, identify trees and, and adopt a tree in maybe in your yard or in your in your neighborhood. Um, think about what it would take what you've learned from what you're going to do at your facility and take that home with you. Um, research. I sent you a, a link. Uh, research and plan a visit to your local state park. Uh, and that definitely is an opportunity to see trees and wildlife and all those things. And then identify products in your home that come from companies that avoid that deforestation. So these are all family activities you could do um, to really help uh, discuss a little bit more about deforestation. And as always, please feel free to send your pictures to education at pbswesternreserve.org. Um, we're, we're collecting all those and hopefully we can share a couple in our, in our last session. So uh, just take that opportunity and, uh, and look at the trees. So thank you for attending today's Cyber Chase Green It Up Exploration. And we're going to have our culminating event tomorrow, the, the big finale, and we're looking forward to your responses and, and your um, of you, thinking of ways you can identify those environmental issues that affect us in, or in you in your communities. And you're our first group that have, has gone, most of you have gone through all three sessions. Um, with that in mind, that's the, that's the idea of the big finale is to take all of those, those things that we have discussed, the pollinators, the, the veggie and fruit uh, container gardening, and now today on the deforestation, and then begin to identify what, what are some of your community issues as it relates to the environment. And then we're hoping that you spend some time and put together a poster, and we'll give you plenty of time to do that in the big finale. Or if you're interested in doing a video, that's certainly something that you can do too. So we look forward to uh, seeing you tomorrow. Um, once again, we thank you so much for your time today. Uh, this episode was on deforestation. And uh, once again, have a great afternoon and, and thank you so much. Thank you.